With the technology in vogue now, what we do know, what are the, the, uh, the trade-offs or the benefits of conventional piston versus diesel as we head into uh, 2010? Well, Jim, I, I think as you start to look at diesel, the trade-offs aren't, th aren't that bad. Uh, from the standpoint of, of penalties to the pilots. You're probably going to see two major trade-offs. A little bit more weight in the nose, diesel versus conventional gasoline, uh, but a little less weight in the fuel tanks because of the energy density of the fuel and the efficiency of the engines. Uh, the other primary trade-off is, is going to be initial acquisition cost to the diesel is likely to be higher. Uh, you're going to pay a little bit more premium for the more robust engine. Uh, but again, your trade-off is going to be potentially a longer TBO, and uh, less fuel burn. So, you know, your general life cycle costs on the diesel promise to be less. Why hasn't it happened before now? Uh, I think number one, when you look at the uh, weight to power ratio um, of the gasoline engine, uh, the, the general performance out of them versus the heavier mass and the complexity of the materials and design that goes into a diesel. Diesel's inherently heavy it's inherently wants to operate at a higher uh, uh, RPM and just designing for the unique aspects of the of the aviation business versus the automotive truck tractor business that you see diesels typically for. You need to pull weight out, you need to be air cooled, uh, at least in our opinion, uh, and you need to avoid the gearboxes. That puts a lot of stress into the engineering realm and designing something that'll be as robust as, as uh, what the aviation sector is going to need. At this point, and realizing we can only know so much without the threat of torture anyway, what's a TCM solution look like? Well, TCM solution is, is going to start with the uh, TD300 that you see behind us here. Uh, a four-cylinder, 230 horsepower, 2200 RPM base diesel engine with a fantastic pedigree. It is a robust, strong engine. Uh, it's an engine that we believe we can build an entire family from 200 all the way up to 400 horsepower. Um, we're currently uh, taking this TD300. We've already completed the testing and, and analysis work to upgrade it to 250 horsepower uh, at 2500 RPM. Very nice engine, fits that niche that we want very well. And then we've already got on the drawing board and, and starting to look at components for the six-cylinder version of this that gets us into the 300 to 400 horsepower range. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. We've already spent a number of meetings with the FAA that's been hugely supportive of the certification process uh, for the TD300. We will be submitting all of our certification paperwork for this uh, over the next few months. That allows us to get the base engine into the certification chain and get it certified. That then allows us a lot of latitude to move forward with both manufacturing plans, airframe installation plans, and modifications without having to worry about the time. We're really working hard to try and have a product out there by the end of 2011, start of 2012, in the 250 horsepower range. And then we're looking in the uh, 2013 time for the uh, six-cylinder uh, diesels. We're not going to focus initially on STCs ourselves. That doesn't mean that we would not support and allow and encourage others to pursue. So as, as you look at your airplane and maybe say, I might want to do something. Um, but we're going to look for others to have that interest. As this industry has shown, there are many people with the vision and capability to bring new technology into the existing aircraft segment. What we want to focus on is getting this technology ready for others to do that and for us to support the OEMs in, in uh, getting next generation aircraft out there with the diesel. One of the things that's, uh, that I find interesting, especially when we upgrade a pilot from a piston to a turbine, is they've got so many years invested in knowing that kind of engine and when they're asked to go to something, even though it may be simpler, especially for the folks who jump from 
uh, conventional piston to you know light jet and FADEC and everything else it gets incredibly easy they're still scared of it what are the lessons that a future GA diesel operator are going to have to learn in order to operate these engines properly what do they need to know well that's an absolutely great question and you know I, I always go back and say we've learned a lot from our FADEC effort and and uh, launching FADEC for example in the Liberty Fleet and, and with a couple of other OEMs that we're working on there is no doubt that the biggest issue that we as the manufacturer and the airframers need to do is effective training of the pilots and of the mechanics. This stuff is extraordinarily easy to use, but it's as simple as I was talking to somebody earlier today and they said you still get the pilot that is used to juggling uh, on his hot engine, you know, fuel and mixture trying to get it to start this stuff with the FADEC and, and the electronic controls like this has, you're wasting your time. Wasting your and that's, that's a retraining effort. For the mechanics, these things will come with diagnostic tools just like you find in the modern, modern, modern automobile. Again, it's, I'm not going to listen with the rod. I need to look at what the diagnostics are telling me and focus on that. It's a retraining effort that I think many people are ready to embrace. We as the manufacturer have taken a major focus on that as we develop the TD300 for long. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. I think diesel ultimately will become the primary. And the primary reason for that is not that there will not be an effective aviation gasoline in the future. It's simply that when you add in commercial aircraft, you add in business jets, business turboprops, the cost and availability of Jet A is likely going to ultimately be less and so that's going to drive people towards the Jet A solution. The other thing is America if we are not stupid enough to give up our preeminence in aviation manufacturing has a great opportunity to be the lead exporter of piston aviation aircraft into new international markets and something like Jet A diesel engine technology provides that opportunity for places like China, India, Pacific Rim, Middle East, where Jet A is widely available and at a very reasonable cost. So for us, it's also a business growth export drive. I've noticed in the diesel category, you're addressing the basically the 200 to 400 horsepower range. Is there a future for diesel in smaller engines, or is the weight penalty going to be too much to, to uh, get past for the time being? Well, I think, uh, you know, ultimately we may see diesels down in the 150, 200. I think when you get down into that um, kind of the LSA small training aircraft range, a... Um, 81 to 94 octane capable uh, gasoline engine is just very hard to beat on general cost, general weight. And again, when I say that 81 to 94 octane, that, that's not a lead, no lead issue. That's a, can I go to Africa and find non-ethanated, ethanol-based gasoline that I can put in my training aircraft? And in that range, yes, the weight penalty uh, and the cost of the diesel is I think going to be more prohibitive uh, and so that's why and you know Teledyne's always focused on that big bore that's why we're going to continue to focus there and then continue to drive better gasoline solutions for the LSA small training aircraft segment. <music>